Well, hello, hello, <clears throat> GH Daily Recap fans, General Hospital fans. Uh, this is the recap for Tuesday, July the 5th, 2022, Tuesday, July 5th, 2022. And I want to talk a bit about what happened today. Uh, today, we had eh, some conversations going on. We had uh, Dante with Rocco, who, by the way, they've aged Rocco, uh, which means when Charlotte finally returns on the canvas, Charlotte will be uh, aged up as well. Um, but anyway, Rocco, Cody and Dante were at the table at the Metro Court doing stupid things like, you know how you hang a spoon on your nose. We got two grown men with spoons on their noses in a nice hotel's restaurant. I, I didn't get that. Um, but one thing about Cody, he loves to tell anybody who will listen. You know, Dante used to get in a lot of trouble. He's telling Dante's son, you know, your father wasn't always good like this. He used to get in a lot of trouble. Who does that? Continuously to anybody. I, Dante needs to set Cody straight behind that. I, I, I definitely, honestly believe he does. Um, and then he, um, that's my dog clearing her throat right now. <laughs> you know, she waits until I want to record to have to do that. But anyway, uh, Spinelli goes up to the bar where Britt is at the Metro Court and he tries to strike a conversation with her. And he shows her this picture of this bombshell model person that um, society setups. Um, <clears throat> let me clear my throat real quick. That society setups is setting him up with. My girl would never go out on a date with him. And Britt kind of took a look at that and was like, her and you? Well, because he wanted to ask her for advice. Come on, Spinelli. And then he was asking her, how come she hasn't taken up her free uh, setups that Zelda promised her? And Britt gave him some excuse, but yeah, she said she would try it out. Or actually, as Britt's leaving, guess who miraculously calls her Zelda? you know, asking her the same thing. So she says, I'll look them over. I'll look over the matches, but she didn't promise too much. And then uh, Sunny is at poolside in, uh, at where it left off Friday. And Olivia is kind of hitting the Carly, ask your ex-husband, he seems to owe you a lot. <clears throat> he could help with the money. So needless to, it's my dog again. She's doing that on purpose, I think. But anyway, um, of course, Carly's like, I would never, don't, and don't you say one thing to Sunny. She does not, you know, don't mention anything to Sunny. So Sunny comes over to her like, well, you know, what's going on? Um, you seem a bit on edge. And Olivia makes herself scarce. But Carly pretty much says, Donna's fine. You know, so that's pretty much all we have to talk about. And she kind of sends him on his way. But Drew goes to Nina and asks Nina to buy out Crimson. He says he's selling Crimson. And, you know, Nina could either have a new boss or she could be her own boss. You know, Nina, Nina has the money. She has millions, millions and millions of dollars, maybe even a billion. She is the heir to the, her wealthy father's estate, okay? Nina has money. And so Nina's like, I think there's a trick here. Something's not right with you coming to me, offering me this. But, um, you know, Drew says, I already have the paperwork drawn up. Have your lawyer look at it. So Olivia comes to Nina's office to see her receptionist, but since she was gone, her, her assistant, Nina says, well, can I help you, Olivia? And she goes, from now on, your invoices, you'll be paying, they'll be coming from me and you'll be paying me and not Carly. I just wanted to let you know. And um, um, not Dante, um, Drew left his briefcase in Nina's office. So Nina, of course, comes out with his briefcase while Olivia's there and Olivia's getting ready to get on the elevator. And she goes, you left your briefcase here in my office. So Olivia leaves and then uh, Drew tells her, you know, 
one thing is she goes, oh, she's told him, why didn't you tell me that this would be helping Carly? And Drew said, because I felt if I told you that, you wouldn't have even listened to the proposal. But he goes, I don't know. I think you may not be able to resist that you'd be the one helping save Carly because all the cash that she would give Drew, Drew plans on trying to help Carly with it, which is, is, is what it's all about. And she goes, he's like, you probably like rubbing her nose in it. And trust me, that got Nina kind of looking like, hmm, what is the perk in the plug to that? How can I make Carly's life miserable? Pretty much, that's what she would try to do um, by owning Crimson or, or buying her out. But we still don't know. She, okay, if Nina does buy Crimson, then I would think she may not be behind that shell corporation. What do you all think? Or would she like to own half of the Metro Court and own her magazine out and out? That would make Nina pretty doggone powerful, right? Yeah, I think so. So anyway, um, back to Dante, Cody, and little Rocco. Well, Cody sees Spinelli talking to Britt at the bar. So of course he has to go over, arms all over Spinelli. I, I can't stand it. Spinelli, I don't like the way he's allowing himself to be extorted. I don't like it at all. And he's, he's uncomfortable with it. And everybody sees what's this deal between you and Cody because you obviously are uncomfortable around the guy. You know, it just makes zero sense. But anyway, Sonny comes over because Spinelli had asked Sonny for drinks. And he makes a point of introducing Cody, you know, to Sonny, letting them know this is Mr. Sonny Corinthos. You know, you've heard of him, right? And Cody's like, oh, yeah, of Corinthos coffee. Well, you kind of would have thought Cody would have said, Dante's father. Hello? Dante's father, but whatever, you know. So that was the end of Cody. Then we had a real cu uh, cute scene. Now remember, Spencer and um, Cam are supposed to get DNA samples from Carly and Jocelyn. Well, Spencer is supposed to help uh, Cameron. Spencer goes off to the side when Cameron's in the pool talking to Josh and Trina and Esme bumps into him. It's like, what are you doing here? And he goes, oh, I'm looking for you, of course. And somehow, you know, they decide to go into the pool because he knew that would create the diversion because Cameron, uh, Spencer's supposed to create a diversion too. So they go in and of course, Joss, uh, um, Esme has to make a dig at Trina about, oh, is this your last hurrah before the trial of the century? I mean, uh, and, you know, uh, I think Jocelyn says something snarky back to her and Spencer's standing there and she goes, um, something about Trina, Esme says, Trina won't be making, you know, too many Google eyes over my boyfriend. And she talks about because she is, you know, making these eyes at, at the cop Rory, you know, and Jocelyn steps in between and says what she has to say. And Trina's like, Joss, you know, just don't. And Jocelyn ends up pushing Cameron. I mean, not Cameron pushing Spencer because Spencer said something really snarky about to Jocelyn um, because I think Esme said something snarky to Jocelyn and Jocelyn is like, what did you say? And then Cameron repeated, no, Cameron said something snarky to Jocelyn and she's like, what did you say? And then Esme repeats what he says. Jocelyn takes Cameron and pushes him into the pool and Esme goes over to Jocelyn and pushes her into the pool. And, and they're both splashing around, Spencer and Jocelyn. And Carly is, is stand, sitting on the sidelines like, oh, no. So then Trina 
takes Esme and shoves her into the pool. So it was so funny to have all of these teens floating around in this pool at the Metro Court. And they all were just splashing around in the water. You know, that it was kind of hilarious to see, you know, all of this action going on with them in this pool. Now, remember, the objective is to get DNA. So before they fell into the pool, Cameron goes over to Carly, who was sitting at the little poolside mini bar, and she's drinking a glass of white wine. And he goes, Mrs. Corinthos, I think you have a little lipstick in your, your tooth. She goes, oh, can't have that, can we? So she takes a napkin, is scraping off her teeth and, and getting a little saliva on there, right? So Spencer, of course, I mean, uh, Cameron, of course, is going to snag that napkin. And when everybody gets out the pool, Jocelyn is yelling, your girlfriend snatched out some of my hair. When in reality, it was Cameron that snatched out some of Jocelyn's hair. <laughs> it was kind of funny. But uh, then he and after the end, he and Cam meet up around the side by the bushes there and Cameron gives Spencer the napkin in a Ziploc and Spencer shows he has the hair, but this is still a hair brain scheme. I don't see how that's gonna work at all. One little bit, but then the next, the next real important scenes were happening with Sasha. Of course, she took the drugs. She did that Friday. She's now just the most chipperish Sasha on the planet. Oh, let's do this. Just night and day from the nervous Sasha about doing this and all these changes. She is just on top of the world. And Lucy asked Maxie, she goes, you know, is it just me or is Sasha acting a little off? But then it was time for things to get started. The interview is going to happen. And of course, sleazeball reporters, there trying to snap a bunch of, of actually photographer. He's not a reporter, the photographer. And he was snatching all these pictures of Sasha and all these, just, you know, uh, interjecting himself everywhere, but mainly looking at Sasha saying, hey, he caught her over there uh, by the side makeup table. Hey, do you need some more pills? And she's like, no, I don't need any more pills. Because in my mind, I'm thinking you gave her what, seven or eight of them? How would she need some more that fast? You know, so he walks away. And of course, what is Sasha doing? Reaching in her bag to take yet another pill that she doesn't even know what's in these pills, but she's going to take another one. So it, Randall walks up behind her, kind of startles her, and he's looking all handsome in his suit. He said he came to support her. So she goes, so well, thank you so much. And she gave him a kiss and said, but listen, I've got to get my touch up on before we start. My makeup touched up. Um, so he says, okay. So he's going to go over, you know, to the side where Maxie and um, Lucy are, Lucy is. So that gave her the chance to sneak that other pill out, pop it in her mouth and drink some water. So she gets in front of the camera and she's like shell-shocked, can't say anything. And it's like, where am I? What's going on? But then she finally snaps out of it. She's charming. She does a phenomenal job. The, the, the cosmetics are flying off the shelf. Everything is a success. And the lady that had the segment after Deception, she came early. She's some little shop shopping network icon too and she came on and lucy and maxi are like oh no how sasha gonna handle this because this is not supposed to happen this was not in the script for this chick to show up so sasha handles it like a trooper she's like hey how would you like a makeover so she's like well okay and sasha does a great job with her makeup and then they turn the reveal to the to the audience and the lady looks really nice. Although to me, she looked the same as when she walked in, but okay, maybe a different shade of lipstick. I don't know. But, you know, she had her makeover and then she's like, well, I have a little, a little surprise or something. I don't know if they were saying they were going to give it to Sasha. Why would they? See, and to me, this is where they didn't do an ounce of their homework or they didn't care 
about Sasha and what she had gone through because the lady, Maxie saw what was in the box before it got taken up to the stage. She didn't know they were gonna take it up there while Sasha was there. And this lady of course sells baby, um, like baby swaddles, you know, for, for your baby. And as soon as they open the box and they're talking about, for all you expecting mothers, Sasha's poor face, just, she now, Everything she had done is like getting ready to go right down the drain right now because the look on her face is they're talking about how soft this little swaddler thing is and oh, the fabric is this, that, and, and Maxie is looking at Lucy and they're putting their heads down and Brando, they're all going like, oh no, oh no. How is she gonna handle this? How is she gonna get you know away from this? So, I actually felt a little sorry for her there because that was out of the blue. And to me, a professional show like that would not just let a guest from the next segment, come on now, crash into yours when your products are still selling. That really would not have happened on, on a shopping network, but okay, it happened here, you know. So anyway, that pretty much is the recaps for today. Um, what I want to do is I want to go into some comments. I'm pulling up my comments from Friday because I got some really good comments that came in uh, for Friday. And um, uh, Anita, Anita says that to her, and, and I feel this way too, she doesn't like the chemistry between Spencer and the new Trina. Cause you know, this is not the original Trina actress. And to me, I agree with that. I think the other actress and Spencer had more chemistry, um, but this new Trina has good chemistry to me with Rory. To me, they match much, much better. I agree with you, Anita, on that. And then let's see, oh, and Anita also talked about, this is probably from one of my other recaps where I asked what were some of the soaps you used to watch. She used to watch um, One Life to Live, uh, All My Children and Another World. Well, All My Children used to be just 100% my favorite show. I loved Susan Lucci. I mean, I, I, I really liked All My Children and I was really sad to see it go off the air but then somehow, remember, it came, made a little comeback on cable or something like that. And it did not do as well because they didn't even get all the actors involved in that. That the, On the cable end, that and One Life to Live, they, it didn't last long and didn't do very well. And Annette feels that Ashlyn is going to use Sally or Diane or maybe Chelsea to do something. Um, I could see, I don't know, because Sally wouldn't dare jeopardize her position at Newman to do anything against Victoria. And Diane, it all depends on what he, if he has information on Diane blackmailing her. Other than that, Diane is trying to stay too much on the straight and narrow or pretend to be on the straight and narrow. So I don't know who Ashlyn's gonna use. Um, let's see, wait a minute, Ash. And actually I'm talking, see, I got these comments that snuck in. Those are all, those are um, Young and the Restless comments, everybody. So go ahead disregard those unless you're young and the restless fans because yeah no those comments aren't my gh comments um let's see gh uh, oh i have one from carol carol is a new subscriber she's happy she found this channel and uh she she loves the recap so thank you welcome welcome carol good to have you good to have you and then, of course, uh, Lucy. Lucy said that the reason why Friday didn't seem like a cliffhanger Friday was because of ABC's coverage of the hearings that were going on. So that's why it kind of pushed things 
um, way back to the side. And let's see, I think that is about it. That is all that I have. Um, that's all that I have in the way of comments. Oh, I do have another new subscriber, uh, M, M, Sim, M Sims. Thank you for subscribing. You know, join every day for the recaps. And please, everybody, listen for your. Uh, if you have friends that you normally talk to, you know about the soaps. Please share my channel. The link is in the description bar. You can go ahead and copy that link and send it to a friend so that they can join those recaps. They can join them as well. And then uh, this chemo beauty did talk about Chase. He said. Chase has always been kind of weak-minded when it comes to women. And remember, he and Nell, Janelle, were involved before she got to town. And she easily would manipulate Chase. Yes, she definitely would. And then, now Willow didn't really manipulate him, but he pretty much would do anything for Willow. And, and, but it's just uh, Brooklyn. It's horrible for him. She's trying to come up with this plan so that he was seeing and then have Link be his manager. Wait, what? That's a disaster right there. And Chase said, no, you're only doing this that, so that you can get your songs back. This has nothing to do with me having a job or, or even becoming a star because you think I can sing so well. Because the first thing she says, no, you get in good with Link and then we can blackmail him to get my songs back. Brooklyn needs to go. She needs to go. She has never truly, the only person that she was able to think about before herself, that was Bailey. That was Bailey. Other than that, every, every plan she has is horrible. Um, everything, just don't do, when Brooklyn tells you to go left, you go right. Okay, because left is taking you off of a cliff, 100%. And who tell, let's do, 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 do. This chemo beauty also reminded me, another reason why Nicholas is trying to um, get Ava to sign the prenup, and I've forgotten all about this, is remember there's a clause that if any one of them is caught cheating, the other one gets everything, all of their assets. Cause Ava does have money too. She actually does, you know, and Nicholas has probably more than Ava though, but Nicholas has a lot of money too. Remember a year or two ago when Ava and Nicholas were trying to use, Nicholas was trying to use Franco to su seduce Ava, he had, Franco painting this picture of Ava. So he was trying to push them together alone a lot. And Ava was trying to uh, put Nicholas and Elizabeth together all the time. And then Nicholas kissed Elizabeth, Ava kissed Franco, and somebody was taking pictures of that. And then they were blackmailing Ava and then the bl blackmailing Nicholas. That was so funny. Come to find out, Scott's the one picking up all the money. And then in the end, it was Elizabeth and Franco working together. They made sure that the pictures looked compromising and they really weren't. And they told Ava and Nicholas that they both deserved it because they put their heads together to try to break up their marriage, period. Just to get rid of one another, you can walk away. But in the end, Elizabeth did not, you know, her pure Elizabeth, she didn't keep the blackmail money and she made sure Franco didn't either. They told, and Scott was like, look, I don't care what you guys do, but somebody's going to give me my cut. I put in a lot of work on this. That was kind of funny, funny back then. But thank you so much, this chemo beauty. I forgot all about the original prenup. So if Nicholas gets her to sign this new document, she will only get half where Ava can walk away with it all because Nicholas deep down knows the affair with Esme is going to come out. 
because he sees what Esme, you know, oh, Mr. Cassidy, you said you weren't going to, Esme, he could see what she's going to do. So Nicholas is trying to protect himself right now. Good call, good call. I love these comments because they do, they bring up a lot of the history from back in the day. So everyone, I will be back tomorrow with the comments, with the recaps from GH Daily Recap to General Hospital, and I will see you tomorrow.